Hey y'all, I'm Red, and welcome to the Shine Shack, the channel that's all about making quality shine. Alright y'all, this is our part 3 in our Apple Brandy 2.0 series. This series is in collaboration with Bad Motivator Legacy Barrels. There'll be a link in the description box below. Y'all go check out Bad Motivator's website, get you a barrel or two. You'll be glad you did, guys. Take your craft to the next level. All right, y'all, real quick, I want to say a big thank you to Christopher Conrad at Bad Motivator Legacy Barrels. It's been awesome doing this collaboration series with him. I've enjoyed working with him throughout this series. It's been awesome. He's just an awesome human being. He makes badass barrels, high-quality barrels. I've really enjoyed this. Guys, if y'all haven't seen part one or two, I'll put a link in the description box so y'all can go check them out as well. Guys, in this video, we're going to go over how to store bad mo barrels, how to fill them, the type of environment you need to age in them with. We're going to go over several things about that, and then we're going to blend all of our spirits from the last run together, and we're going to fill this bad boy up, guys. If you could do a few things for me, please like, subscribe, and tell a friend, guys. It really helps the channel out. I know y'all get tired of me saying that, but you know I got to say it. All right, y'all, let's dig on in. Hey y'all, so we're going to start going over the barrels a little bit. I'm sitting kind of low, but it'll be alright. So this is the Bad Mo Barrels, guys. If you ain't seen them, you've been living under a rock. But anyway, they're awesome. They're just a hair under two gallons. The sides are stainless steel. You've got your staves here at the front that are pressed in. It's the same surface area as a 53 gallon barrel, guys. What that means is longer maturation times. You know, if you have an all wood barrel this size, Within four to six months, it would be done and possibly over oak. You don't really get that micro oxidation in that time. Nothing can beat time in the barrel, guys. I've used staves and jars. I've used wood chips, all small, all wooden barrels, all kinds of stuff. And pretty much what you're doing is oak tea bagging. You're adding the wood sugars and the tannins and stuff, but you're not getting that time, that good, good micro oxidation that time for that spirit to really round off, mellow out, and become what it can be. And these barrels, you can do that because it's the same surface area as a 53 gallon, what the big distilleries use. You know, it's not really economical for us home distillers with a 25 gallon steel to fill a 53 gallon barrel. It would take you months to come up with enough to fill that thing. So these, that's what makes this so awesome, guys. And another thing and awesome about Bad Motivator Barrels, they use only the highest quality wood, guys. He only buys the highest quality wood. This is American White Oak, 48 month air season, last time I checked. And he doesn't fear much from that, maybe a couple months. They stay around that awesome quality woods. Air seasoned, that's even better. Seasoning really matters, guys. The longer, the better. It allows stuff in that wood to break down and really, it, it really makes a difference. If you take a piece of wood that hasn't been air seasoned and just kiln dried and put it beside of something like this, it's a world of difference on the palate in my opinion. But they're built heavy duty, awesome quality. You got a spigot on the bottom so you can sample whatever you want anytime and try it. You got a bung right here that you fill it with. He also offers multiple different kinds of woods, used barrel, new American white oak. I think he has some uh, Oregon oak, just multiple used sherry barrels and stuff, multiple different options, guys. Also, you have a char level of one through four. And then when it comes to toast, you have like light toast, medium toast, medium plus. It all depends on what you're wanting, guys. <clears throat> And this one I chose medium toast and number two char. I'm really after like that cooking spice, cinnamon, nutmeg, cooked apple flavor when it comes out. That's what I like. So that's why I decided to go with this one. And this is the one that Christopher uh, Conrad provided for us, guys. These things are made by hand. These things are made in his hand. He makes each barrel. These aren't made on a giant machine thousands a day. These take time and effort. They're not made in 20 minutes. These take a while to make. He puts his heart and soul into these barrels and that shows. It's a work of art in my opinion. But there, there's no nails or nothing in this. It's all held together by pressure and they press it in. They use a little bit of wax on the outside edges. 
If you happen to have a little leak or something, which I doubt it, you can use a little beeswax to put on there to seal it up. Alright guys, so something I mentioned in my last video I want to clarify real quick. Once you get this filled and it's time for you to start aging, and you get it filled up, you want to leave about 5% headroom in this for expansion and you know it's going to swell and stuff. You just want to leave some room. If you fill it up too much, if it does build a little pressure, it'll pop the the staves out of the front of the head out of the barrel. But guys, something I want to clarify real quick. A big distillery, their rick houses, where they store all their barrels, they have like thousands of gallons in there and you know, barrel after barrel after barrel, floors of barrels. The fact that they're all in there together, it creates a different environment. It maintains a certain humidity. So no matter what the temperature and stuff is outside, it doesn't affect the barrels on the inside. They kind of take care of their self through the process. This is just one barrel. When you fill this, you do not want to put this up against extreme temperatures. Like leave it outside in a building with no air or nothing. That's going to get 100, 100 plus degrees. He advises you to keep these in like a closet or an interior basement. I keep mine out here. It never gets above 75, 80 degrees. It's fairly cool all year long. That's ideal. Don't go putting these in extreme temperatures and wondering why the head blew out of it, guys. That's not what I meant in the last video. You're still going to get minor temperature changes inside your house from where you switch your air off and turn your heat on. There is a little bit of a difference. You're still going to get that fluctuation to push the spirit in and in the wood and back out the wood. You're still going to get that. These barrels, guys, if you're wanting to age for a couple months, you want to age years in these barrels. You actually get to age multiple years, three, four years, whatever you want to age, you can do it in these guys. All right, guys, when you get these barrels, they're going to be, like I said, they're going to be vacuum sealed, where he water tests them and everything. If you're not going to use the barrel right away, you need to go ahead and take it out of that vacuum seal. Do not leave it vacuum sealed, guys. You want to keep these clean and bacteria free. If you're going to fill it right away, go ahead and fill it. If you're not going to fill it right away, there's a couple options. You can go on Bad Motivator's website and buy a little packet for long-term storage. And that allows you to mix it with like distilled water and fill your barrel up. And it's going to keep any bacteria or microorganisms, anything from growing in your barrel. And it's also going to stop your head from drying out and cracking. You want to keep this wood wet so it keeps a good tight seal. As we know, when wood gets wet, it swells and seals if there's any cracks or leaks. So you want to keep that wet. Another option I do is I take a quart of high proof liquor, like 160 proof, and I pour one quart in it. There's a quart in it right now. And what I do is I store it on its top like that. Just like that until I'm ready to use it. It doesn't take much. Just make sure you don't knock it over. In a little bit, when we go to fill it, I will take that quart of high-proof liquor out of it. As a last resort, you can use water, like distilled water. I don't really recommend that, but you can do that. But when you buy these barrels, you will get a sheet of paper in the box with your barrel, and it'll tell you about storage and what to do. He has several options in there that you can do. So just look at that paper, and you'll be ready to go, guys beauty about these barrels is you can play around with different toast levels, different char levels. They add different things to your final product. The char layer is more or less like a filter. It's going to filter stuff in your spirit that you don't want and smooth it down. Your toast level is going to give it the flavor, the wood sugars, the tannins, stuff like that. So guys, play around with different flavors, different toast levels. From a light toast number two char to a medium toast number four char, totally different flavor that you're going to get on your bourbon, brandy, whiskey, whatever you put in this. And guys, this does it all. You can age gin, absinthe, rum, whiskey, you name it, you can age in these barrels. Hey y'all, so I got everything set up. Here's my five gallon bucket for blending. We'll blend in there. Then I have a drain spout down here for bottling and for putting it in the barrel. Here's all of the good brandy we got off of last week's run. This is by far the best apple brandy I've ever made and I've ever tasted. This is some really, really good stuff here, guys. 
And when it comes to aging in a barrel, or any type of aging for that matter, the better the spirit you put into the barrel and the better ingredients the barrel is made out of, the better product that comes out in the end. You know, that's just common sense. The better the ingredients you use, the better the product, guys. That's always the case for your mash and everything, guys. All right, so jar number one is three quarters of a quart of late heads. I threw off a half a gallon of heads and then I jarred this. There's a lot of flavor in your late heads, guys. Like there is a lot of apple on this, especially on the nose. Ah. But it's still kind of harsh a little bit, which we want a little bit, bit of that. We don't want it too smooth in that barrel. It's gonna be in there for a long time. Having a little grunginess, a little sharpness, in the end, the char layer in that barrel and stuff will help mellow that out and really round it out and really make a good product in the end. We don't want much though. Here's the tails that come off the run. I started collecting tails around like 96 proof and I ran down four proof points. So this is 96 to 92 proof in that jar. And this is our hearts, two through 10. It's all in order. I'm gonna give you an example of how I go through and taste each individual jar. Look at the pros, look at the cons. Does it taste good? Does it have a good nose? Then I also kind of say, you know, hey, do I think jar number two and eight would taste good together? Kind of think ahead if you can. Kind of think of everything as a whole in the end because we are going to be blending this all to make one. If there's a certain jar that you really don't like, you may not want to put any of that in there. Save it to the end, add the stuff you do like, and then come back and add a little out of time if you have to. Blending is an art in itself. Me and you, we could take the same mash and make it side by side, but in the end, when we do our blending, it's going to taste totally different if we do our blending differently. But I've already went through and tasted all these. They're fantastic. Jar number 10 was a little light on the flavor to me, but I'm gonna kinda hold it to the side and blend some in at the end. I think it's gonna be totally fine blended with the rest of it, but that's the only one that kinda alarmed me a little bit. But I'm gonna show you real quick. Also guys, I recommend starting at the lowest proof, working your way up to the highest proof. You don't wanna blow your palate out in the very beginning. Starting off with your high proof, like jar number one, you can blow your palate out then you're not gonna be able to taste nothing by the time you get to the end. And if it starts like everything smelling the same, you can smell the corner of your arm. It kind of resets your nose. It kind of resets it. And you wanna drink plenty of water in between while you're tasting these. If not, everything's gonna taste the same to you. But here's how I do it. We'll do jar number six. You don't have to have a Glen Cairn glass. You can use whatever you have. I always just put a little bit in there. I'll sit and let it breathe for a minute. You really just smell it. Take your time with it, guys. You don't have to be in a hurry when you're blending. You can see the legs on that running down the glass real good. And I also recommend you can smell with your mouth closed. I always, I smell better with my mouth open. And if you're, if you don't think say jar number six would taste right with jar number four, mix it together a little bit and see what it smells like together. Really. You get different stuff throughout the run. Like jar number two is totally different than jar number 10. Different compounds and stuff come off at different times during the run, different flavor profiles. If they all smell the same to you over time, you'll, if you're new to this, you'll experience that you'll get a better palate and a better nose for it and you'll be able to pick out the differences. Don't worry if you can't in the beginning. That smells awesome though. At the beginning of this run, like from two to five, with two to six, it was really like fresh cut crisp apple. Kind of that apple peel, real fresh apple. 
7 through 10 was more of like a cooked apple, cinnamon, nutmeg, fried apples. It, it blew my mind that that's how it was, which I'm going after that fried apples, but that in the beginning, that good crisp, flat, fresh, green apple, it tastes so good. It's very good. That's really good. It's really, really high proof, but that's really good. That's easily at 130, 135. Oh yeah. Woo. And also guys, you don't be scared to add a little water to it. If you don't want to drink that high proof, just add a dab of water to it. That A lot of times water will even open it up better for you so you can really get in it and smell it and pick out the different flavor profiles in it. The different notes in it. But I do that to each jar, guys. I go through and sample every single jar. Make sure you do that. So guys, when it comes to a brandy, a brandy's very volatile. The fruit profile is very light to begin with. So I like to go in the barrel at 130 to 135 proof in that range. But we're just gonna start dumping, guys. Make sure the valve's closed. And it generally take your time when you're going through sampling each jar. I did it yesterday and it took me like two and a half hours to go through. Be picky with it. That's the beauty in this hobby. Like being able to sit there, relax, and sample the awesome product you made. We got a pretty good return off this run and I didn't only put 20 pounds of sugar. But that yeast done a fantastic job at covering that sugar. Well, we inverted the sugar too. Every little thing helps. But between inverting that sugar and using that Mangrove Jacks M02 yeast, I can't even tell I put sugar in this. This tastes like brandies I've made in the past with no sugar, only fruit and a little bit of water. All right, all we got left is that jar number 10. Just got a, still got a good nose, but it's just a, I'll tell you what, we'll, I'm gonna go ahead and always rinse your glass out in between, guys. Okay. Before I add a little heads or tails or any of jar number 10, I'm gonna give it a little stir. Get us a little sample. Not much. Okay. Oh, that smells fan. That is apple all day. Kind of bummed that fried apple and cinnamon and nutmeg. It's overpowered by fresh apple, but I'm not really bummed because that smells fantastic. I really hope I have a jar or two left of this clear. This is awesome. That is fresh apple, apple peel, fresh apple. A little bit of like sour apple. And it's not that artificial apple. If you ever smell apple brandy and you smell artificial apple, guys, there's some, there's something not right there. Apple brandy doesn't smell like that. Artificial apple and real apple is two totally different smells. That smells awesome. Apple in the front. And it's very silky and velvety. Coats the mouth really good. Not a lot of burn. It's got good legs on it. Really silky. Really coats the mouth. You get real fresh apple in the front. That apple peel, chewiness. Now, when it comes to head and tails, especially on the nose, this has late heads. This is not the first jar that come off the steel. This is technically the third of heads. So it's, there's hearts in here too, but there's 
some heads. But the fresh apple on the nose in them late heads is out of this world. A lot of your apple flavor comes off in your heads. But the fact that I do infusions, I'm adding more apple throughout the run. That's why I love to do infusions. But when you do infusions, make sure you pack as much flavor in each infusion as you can. Alright, so I'm only going to use a little bit of this. Yep, just we only used a tiny bit. I'm gonna get a good smell of it. Oh yeah. Now see them tails that's you can tell it's definitely tails. It's not super grungy because it's really early tails, but there's grunginess there, but it's got this awesome sweet flavor. All right, we're only going to add a little bit of that. Not much at all of those. Ah, that's fantastic, guys. It's not too harsh on the nose. Still the, still the same thing. Fresh cut apple with that little bit of bitter like apple peel. Just a hint. Really sweet on the nose. That's good there. Hey y'all, so we got our bad motivator barrel up here. We got a rubber mallet. I wish I had one of them fancy wooden ones. They sell them on the Bad Motivator website. I'm definitely gonna get me one soon. And we got our extra bung. So we got that quart of high proof in here that I've been using to store the barrel until we're ready to use it. Where I've stored it upside down to keep the stave swelled up and keep the wood wet and so it doesn't dry, shrink, and crack up. So we're gonna pull that bung out of there. That's the one for storage. I'm going to get a jar. I'm going to try to use this first. Look at that color. That's only been in there for a couple weeks. Just washing all that extra char out of there. Yeah, that's from the char. Alrighty guys, before we start filling the barrel up, we're gonna check our proof, our barrel entry proof. Look at that, guys. Huh. Dang, I'm good. This is reading 132 proof. So 132 proof, but you have to always remember to check your temperature. Because if it's too hot or too cold, you have to do a temperature correction. So it's Hydrometers are calibrated at 60 degrees, so we're going to check our temperature. Sixty-four degrees. That's only a four degree difference. I'm not going to worry about adding that. That would probably take away maybe a point. So I'm not going to worry about that. So we hit our proof right on the mark. I'm excited about that. I wanted 130 to 135 proof. So 132 proof is perfect for me. I'll take that any day. All right, guys, now we're going to fill it. But remember, we got to leave 5% for headroom in here. I'm going to try all I can not to overfill this thing. This is how I fill mine. I'll just add some and keep checking. This apple brandy smells amazing. 
As you can see, it's going down in there. Alright, it's hard for me to see, so I'm gonna check the level real quick. About an inch down below the bung is good. We still got a ways to go. This is a perfect blending barrel, guys. You can go up to five gallons in here. This is what I blend and temper my liquor in. If I'm not putting it in a barrel and aging it, I always temper all my liquor down to 100 proof. And that's just the range I like. I really don't want to overfill this barrel and ruin this good apple brandy, though. Now we're going to put our fresh bung in. I got a rubber mallet. You don't need to beat this thing down there. You just need to tap it a little bit. That's it. This table's kind of bouncy so it's going to be kind of tricky but you just just like that doesn't take much and if it leaks a little it won't leak but a second but look at there that bung's not leaking a drop but you want to make sure that you leave about an inch of head space this wood's really thick it's like an inch thick these staves you want to leave another inch below the stave line of head space, about 5%. Hey y'all, so we got the barrel all filled up, got it labeled and everything. Now we'll let it sit for about a year and then I'll start sampling it every four to six months until it hits that sweet spot, what I like. We all have different palates, guys. So what I like, you probably won't like and vice versa. But it's very straightforward. It ain't hard to use these barrels. It ain't hard to age in barrels, guys. You follow a few basic little principles and you're good to go. The possibilities are unlimited. And in these bad motivator barrels, you can make a fantastic spirit, guys. I hope y'all like this series. I went a little bit more into my apple brandy. Kind of remodeled the recipe a little bit. Put a little more time, effort, and money towards that mash. And it really paid off in the end, guys. It made a fantastic apple brandy. I'll definitely be making it in the future. I may tinker around with the uh, thumper a little more because that's coming up next for video and upcoming videos. I added an inch and a quarter ball valve to my thumper. So from now on, when I infuse, as I drop a half gallon, I'm gonna drain a half gallon. So it'll always be fresh infusion in that thumper at all times. It won't be diluted every time I hit the thumper. So that will probably help and help add more flavor, but I can't complain with this. I'm very happy with it. It's fantastic. And I think you will be too, guys. But I've, I've really enjoyed this. I hope to do more of these in the future and I'll definitely be filling more Bad Mo barrels in the future, guys. So y'all try this out. Hit the comment box and tell me if y'all like these three part series so I can plan to do more in the future. And until next time, guys, Thank you for stopping by. Shine on.